Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just in the kitchen here. We got some cooler weather going on, so uh, it made me have a little rumbling in my tummy there. So I decided to make a nice meat stew. Stew beef, but I don't chop it up as much. What I got is some top sirloin steak at a discount. I bought three of them. So I got a little over three pounds of meat here. About three pounds, and we're going to go it in. A, I got a hot Dutch oven here. I'd already put one piece in, but I had my camera on picture, and I only took a picture. So I want to see. Oh, yeah. I didn't even season this meat yet. I don't season it yet because I don't want the seasoning to stick to the bottom of the pan. I want the meat to burn to the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to sear off those three and kind of flip them, then sear off the other three. Then we're going to add onions and carrots and uh, garlic and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I'm getting ready to uh, get the meat seared first and then get it into a stew form. And I'll come back and show you how we're doing. Now I will add some seasoning to this meat in just a little bit. So you'll see. Just in the kitchen. Okay, I think it's time to flip. Yep. Woo! Oh, sorry. Can't keep the camera on. So, see, we got it. That's what you call a sear. Only thing I want to see is sear a plate get filled up so I can eat it. Sear in the kitchen. Woo, that one's getting really good. All right, that one's trying to get down there a little bit. Now that I got most of the meat seared pretty good, we're going to sear the other side. But I'm going to add some, a little bit of, uh, let's see, garlic powder. This way it doesn't stick to the bottom of my pan. I'm going to garlic powder that sucker right up. Oh, yeah. Can't get heavy-handed with that stuff. I'm going to add some black pepper. Yep. Black pepper right there. I got the badia. You got to get that from the Mexican section. They know how to make black pepper. Oh, yeah. Woo, doggy. Looks like a lot, but it won't be too much. Then some salt. You don't want to over-salt this stuff because I'm going to have salt in my bouillon cubes and, uh, and all that other stuff I had. So now that I got it seared on one side and I got that cooking, I'm going to go ahead and add some onions, which I got right here. Add some onions. Got them chopped up, rough cut onions. And I'm going to cut up some carrots next. And I turned my heat down just a little bit because it was burning so much, but it'll be fine. I want to get some of them onions touching the bottom also because the onions will actually add some moisture to this as it cooks. So, coming back with the carrots. And I'll show you how to make them bouillon cubes into delicious sauce. Mm -mm. Coming back. After I got it seared enough, I went ahead and got the onions down low in there. It starts building this sauce. I haven't added any water or anything yet. But I, I, I got the bottoms pretty good and crispy. Now I'm adding my onions down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and throw another onion in too because uh, those onions cook down and they become the sauce so it's delicious. Delicious. Throw another onion in there. I'm going to chop up them carrots I got right there and I'll put them in in a few minutes. But I want to kind of get the onions cooked down a little bit and get all the meat ready because when I put the lid on there I want it to cook for about probably three hours, maybe four, to break down the, the fibers in the meat. So then when you put it in your mouth, you just get that delicious, oh, 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 oh man, it's gonna be good. Coming back. Okay. I swear the whole house smells like umami. Ooh, mommy, that's gonna be good. That's right. So uh, go ahead and put my garlic in there. ka -ching! look at that balance it right on up get the garlic and all these carrots 
Yep. So I made me a little jingle to go with my show. Yep. I think I'll try it out for y'all real quick here. Let me get my carrots in and then, uh, so I was sitting there thinking the other day, what's a good jingle? Boom, 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 heating up my skillet, cooking for us all. I'm just in the kitchen, we're gonna have a ball. What to make for dinner? Well, I don't really know. Just get in the kitchen and come check out the show. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add a can of beef broth. Oh yeah, look at that. Because the bottom got a little bit burnt, but that's actually flavor. Yep. Nothing's really burnt till I say it's burnt. If you can still chew it, you can still eat it. Now, the beef broth, I got the beef, I got the carrots, I got the onions, I got the garlic. So, we're going to cook it. I'll give it about an hour now with the lid on and let that beef kind of break down and then uh, we'll come back and then season it to taste and I might add a little bit more liquid to it and some beef bouillon cubes I think I got some of them up here I'll find them in a minute and kind of make my uh, sauce but I don't put many potato I don't put any potatoes in this I make mashed potatoes on the side and then you can just slather it on top and make the volcano coming back okay we're back She's been on number three for about an hour now. Oh yeah, look at that tenderized meat. Everything cooking down like it should. That meat looks really good. It's starting to break apart. Oh yeah. Oh, I gotta try that piece. It's gonna be hot. Mmm. Not too chewy could use a little salt because I didn't put much but right now I want a lot of gravy because I'm gonna make my mashed potatoes so I'm gonna add a cup of water just one cup because I don't want it to be it's not really a soup it's gonna be more like stewing potatoes I use bottled water when I'm cooking because well sink water has a lot of chlorine and uh, fluoride and stuff in it God knows we don't need anything else so I'm gonna add that and since it's not too salty you got to be aware of this stuff I'm gonna put two cubes of uh, beef bouillon then near the end I'm probably gonna thicken it up with a little bit of um, cornstarch but I'll let it simmer and make sure it's good and hot before I put that cornstarch in and I'll mix my cornstarch with a little bit of water first so it doesn't clump you know what to do Coming back. Okay, we're back. The uh, stew's been cooking for about three hours. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. This is where the meat starts to just fall apart. Oh, gosh. Look at that. Yeah, that's going to be good. So, I went ahead and put my potatoes on. Got some gonna make that into mashed potatoes I had uh, red skins and russets so I just used everything I had left mixed them all together and have some corn in the cob and then with that these Campari tomatoes are really good they're very sweet and delicious and then I use this kind of bread French bag it bread they bag it we eat it I'm gonna slice this up and put it in the oven and then I'll show you what we got when we're back. Okay, I went to cut these tomatoes up, but my knife wasn't quite sharp enough. You gotta have a really, really sharp knife for this. And don't slice your wrist off when you're doing this, or else do a little more than tomato blow. What we can do is take the tomatoes and I'll cut them up, put them in here, and then we're gonna put it on the bread. See, look at that. Oh, it goes through like butter. And I usually cut them up like this. And then, look at how easy they cut. 
you don't really need to be perfect. Just make sure you don't cut your fingers off. Somebody will be having more than chicken fingers. They'll be having daddy fingers in there on their bag of bread. So this is like uh, stuff to pile on top of your bag of bread. Anyway, I'll show you in just a minute how I season it. Okay, look at how beautiful those tomatoes came out. Mmm. They're so sweet and delicious. We're going to add a little bit of something special. Not much olive oil. You don't really want tasty olive oil. This is just going to help stuff stick to it. With olive oil. Just a little bit of sugar. Not much. Probably like that much, which is only about, I don't know, half a tablespoon. Actually, that's enough right there. Just a little bit. I'm going to add some salt. That's enough salt. A little bit of black pepper. Just enough. And then, maybe some oregano leaves. Not much. Now, what you do is let this sit for about 10 minutes. And when you put it on your bread, mm -mm -mm. it's so good. I'm not sure what that's called. I usually eat the end parts because sometimes people don't like them, but I like it. I can chew right through that stuff. Coming back in a minute. Bag it bread. What we're gonna do is heat this up in the oven just a little bit. Do the main. This is the best kind because it's so nice and airy. Get your bread knife. Look at how airy and fluffy that is. And these are going to turn into, like, I don't know, spaximadis, which is Greek for dry bread. Cook them in the oven, but don't burn them. on their uh, 350 for about 10 minutes, just to get them crunchy and crispy. And then this will go on the crunchy bread. And then it's so delicious. Going back and again. Okay, we're going to thicken it up a little bit here with uh, cornstarch. See? It's a little bit thin, but I got a special ingredient also. One pack of gravy mix. You got to cheat a little bit, but I don't pour my gravy mix straight in because it might clump. So I'm going to mix this with some water also. This is cornstarch that I've already dissolved. I don't want it to get too pasty. And also you got to make sure that this stuff is boiling. Make sure it's bubbling good when you add this stuff. Add the corn. Oh, it's thickening up already. Look at that. Oh my God, look at that meat, Josie. Mmm. -hmm. It's going to be like a giant piece of gravy. I don't even know if I need that gravy mix. What do you think? Nah. I think I'm going to hold off on the gravy mix because it's going to thicken up enough. Put just a little bit of cornstarch and it's already... Nearly all oh, gravy. Mm, righteous. Oh, we also got corn. Coming back in a few. Okay, just in the kitchen. This is the final one. We got the bread out of the uh, oven. This is how it's supposed to look if you want it that crunchy. It's kind of soft in the middle. And this is how you eat it. You take a, oh yeah. Take your tomatoes and you dip it right in there. This is like an appetizer. Mmm. Mashed potato. Mmm. That's good and fresh. Corn on the cob. I'm not gonna cook it more than 10 minutes. Probably like eight minutes. You want it fresh and you want to eat your corn right when it comes out. This is our stew. The stew is ready. All day, you just put that right over your mashed potatoes, meat and all. So, another delicious meal by Just in the Kitchen. Come see us next time for more great recipes.